Here's a good number one because it can happen at high elevations camping even in the summer and it's frozen pipes. The number one way that I found to keep the pipes from freezing and the water pump from clogging up with ice is to leave the water cabinet door open. And keeping the heater in the lowest setting when you're not actually driving. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Austin with Wolfpack Outdoors. The seven things that I wish I knew before I owned my four-wheel camper that I'm gonna share with you today. And my main goal is to help you reach your overlanding goals by sharing my own experiences, tips and tricks and lessons learned. Number two, and that's window insulation. I really believe that we can insulate our windows in all four seasons. I found that keeping Reflectex on the windows generally keeps us about 10 degrees warmer in the winter and about 10 degrees cooler in the summer. What I've done is a two layer system. And if we peel back the first layer, you're gonna see the second layer below. And we've created this void space. And the void space really acts as a third layer of insulation. So we have the single layer of Reflectex, then we have the, the air gap, and then we have the second layer of Reflectex offering us what I feel is the maximum amount of R value that we can get from it on this camper itself. And it's easy enough to take out that when we wanna enjoy the view, we can just peel it off and store it in a cabinet. Number three, that's gonna be the thermal layer that's to my sides here. One of the questions that I get frequently asked is, do you use your thermal layer? Do you think it's really necessary? And my answer is always, yes, it is. The thermal layer really creates another air gap like the Reflectex does, except this air gap is about two and a half inches wide, which provides, well, I'm not a scientist. I can't tell you what it provides technically, but I can just tell you that if you touch your hand to the vinyl and then you touch your hand to the thermal layer, I feel a difference and I think you will too. Number four, and this is something that I wasn't quite aware of at the time that we purchased our four wheel camper, or I would have made the changes necessary to make it a non-issue. And that's actually doing any work on the road. So if we're out camping for longer than two days, I need to be charging things. And the same goes with my wife and kids. And the one drawback of the four wheel camper is the outlets don't work unless you're plugged into shore power or you have an inverter. And from what I've seen, from the four wheel camper build website, there is no inverter option. So it really comes down to having an aftermarket inverter installed or calling them and making that special request. But if you're gonna camp in your four wheel camper for more than a night and you have to do any kind of work on the road, it's gonna be very beneficial for you to get an inverter. Not only that, but have a solar system that can handle the kind of power output that you're gonna need. It's very true. And if we were to actually get into the numbers of the solar panels that you need and the battery bank you need, the dual solar panel is the most likely option. And then whether you go with a lithium battery option or if you go with like uh, two six volt deep cell batteries, and those give you about 213 amp hours of power. In my experience, the 213 six volts seem to be enough where the solar panels aren't collecting any energy. Number five, comfort is king, hands down, and that's it. We can wrap it up, drop the mic right here. Unless you've never slept on anything but a rock, sleeping on the mattress inside the four-wheel camper will feel awful. And I'm kind of really picky about what I sleep on because I've slept on the dirt too much in my life. Uh, between being homeless for a while and then military and being a firefighter. Uh, well, still as a firefighter, I still sleep on the dirt. Uh, so I feel like my experiences of sleeping on the dirt are, um, I could probably be a professional by now if I wanted to, dirt sleeper. That's weird, professional dirt sleeper. I've never even thought of that. Yeah, what I'm saying is that when you do order your four wheel camper, you can have the bed deleted deleting the bed is going to offer you the finances to be able to make your own bed just like we did so i think we spent under 325 dollars on the bed total because we have a hypervent layer that takes care of the gap from the bed to the slide out because that's really uncomfortable to sleep on um, number two is the all the bedding and i think we went with like 500 thread count 
queen size bedding for the whole thing. Uh, let's see, number three would be the pillow topper. Uh, I think it's an Amazon Basics pillow topper. And then under the pillow topper, I have a two inch memory foam Amazon Basics foam mattress. And then under that, I've got a nine inch thick air mattress that uh, blows up by the flip of a switch. But I'd say our bedding is way, way, way beyond that foam mattress that they give you from four wheel camper. And not to say anything bad about four wheel camper, because I feel like they do a really great job on the things that they do build. But when you put like this three inch rock hard foam mattress inside of a camper, that's not really comfortable. Maybe a redesign is in uh, order. I don't know. If you're watching this and you already have a four wheel camper and you have the mattress, maybe you could leave a comment below and let us know if it really is comfortable or not. Maybe I'm just really biased. I don't know. This one comes in at number six. It's the necessary accessories that you're gonna need for your first actual camping trip that you may or may not get from the factory. Here we go. The list in no particular order. Toilet paper roll holder. If you got the option with the toilet inside the camper, there is no toilet paper holder. Somebody pumped the brakes on that one. So who in the R&D department is saying don't put toilet paper holders in campers? What? I don't know. It's crazy, right? Number two, paper towel holder. We really try to use microfiber cloth. Paper towels as a secondary standby usually work out for us really well when it comes to very small things or things that we don't actually want to get our hand towel on. Or if I'm checking the oil in the truck in the morning, boom, paper towel, done, right? Okay, uh, sink strainer. Now, this is something that we didn't get until very recently. The problem that I faced is we were camping at a beach uh, and we were doing some dishes and a large piece of noodle went down the sink and it nearly clogged up the whole system. But fortunately, I had like this wire that I stuck down in the sink and I was able to flush it out. After that, I ordered some sink strainers. Uh, cargo bins. So I use cargo bins under both of the back seat for storage. I found that the bins really help keep things organized through the craziness of driving. Fridge bins, and I have these tiny little cute fridge bins inside the fridge for stuff that likes to roll around like grapes or fruit, you know. And then I have like this bar that goes across the bottom of the fridge to keep all the waters in check and from like bouncing back and forth and banging on the fridge doors. We're going over crazy stuff. Let me just do a quick punch list. Uh, a water fill line, a filter for the water fill line, a pressure regulator. When you do plug in your hose line to the camper itself, a power cord with adapter for the camper to actually plug into the camper so when you're using shore power or uh, doing like a rapid charge of your batteries if you have sunk them a little bit too low where the alternator won't recharge them so leveling leveling blocks are huge it's easy enough to buy a couple of these really cheap leveling blocks they're usually like an eight by eight spare fuses some wash and vinyl protectant. So I like the Meguiar's uh, RV and boat wash and I like the Meguiar's RV and boat vinyl protectant because I feel like they're really high quality and I've never had an issue deteriorating the, the vinyl fabric or the exterior of the camper, like the gel coat. The next thing would be a toilet treatment. I wish I would have got toilet treatment before I actually started using the toilet. A gray water catch, elbows, and a short hose. So the gray water catch, not every park or campsite is going to want you to dump your gray water on the ground. I actually prefer a collapsible gray water catch so it doesn't take up a lot of storage space and it isn't really heavy. For us, uh, I'm a big believer in sustainability and protecting the planet. So for all of our dishwashing and all of our showers and body washing, we use a uh, sustainable resource soap that is biodegradable and earth safe. So we're not negatively impacting the planet when we do put our gray water outside of the camper. Oh, the elbows are for the water outlets on the uh, side of the camper. It's like a brass elbow that just plugs into the water outlet on the exterior of the camper. And then we run a hose straight down from that to the ground, or when we need to, we run it into the gray water catch. Number seven, getting level at camp. For the sink itself to properly drain, it's better if the camper's level and to cook, 
it just makes things easier when you're cooking on the stove and you actually have a level surface to work on. That's why we use bubble levels on the exterior of the camper. And then we're about to purchase the 360 degree level for inside of the camper. So when Summer's in here setting it up and I'm still trying to get the camper level, she can tell me, okay, we're close. And then I can make the necessary adjustments out there and then get us perfectly level for camping. Woo! Wait, one more key beginner four wheel camper tip. And that's dump your toilet. So at about three days is the point where you need to dump your toilet. I'm gonna to give you an example. When we first got into Chicago, Illinois for Expedition Rex Shunt, I forgot to dump the toilet at the gas station before we got into the city. And then when we got in the hotel room, I was like, well, I'll get to it tomorrow. And then B had her Rex Shunt surgery the following day. So I didn't actually get to dumping the toilet to about a week later, one of the most horrendous smells. And as I was dumping it out, that was one of those times where I was like puking in my mouth and it was awful. So what I do now is every other day or every third day, usually there's a vault toilet that we can find or whatever gas station we end up stopping at when we fuel up. That's it. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Austin with Woolpack Outdoors. I'll let you later. Boosh.